Hi guys, Jeff Morrow here, and we are about to make one of my world famous Chicago style deep dish pizzas. And you don't need to get on a plane to enjoy it in my hometown. You do it right in your own kitchen. Starting with about a cup and a quarter of room temperature water. We're gonna get our yeast bloomed right here. So one pack of active dry yeast. It goes right in there. And to help feed that yeast, we're gonna add in about a teaspoon of sugar. This is all gonna start to activate. So this is gonna take about 15 minutes to bloom and get all bubbly and you know when it has that beautiful layer on top. So press pause and I'll see you back here in 15. All right, it's been 15 minutes. As you can see, the top has got those bubbles on there. The yeast has been fed with sugar. It's activated. It's ready to be combined with the dry ingredients. I have a standing mixer here fitted with a bowl. Leave that right there and we can kind of bring the horse to the water and start measuring out our dries here, starting with three and a half cups of all-purpose flour, right into the bowl. So three cups of the flour plus a half a cup. Next, salt to help season it. So two teaspoons of kosher salt, Another dry that you typically don't see in a lot of pizza recipes, it's an eighth a teaspoon of cream of tartar. This helps the dough relax so you don't have to overwork it. You can form it better and it's less dense and chewy. It's just more, you get more of that even, you know, crispiness that we're looking for. And we can mix these dries up real quick. Make sure it's all together. Now we can add our oil. This has got corn oil in it. We're doing a half a cup of oil plus three tablespoons. And as always, when you're measuring liquid in a measuring cup, don't hold it in your hand, right? Because you're rocking about, right? Probably listening to tunes, moving the whole time while you're cooking, you know, just getting in the vibe, right? And if I do that while measuring, it's sloshing around. You're not going to get true measuring, see? Put it down, relax the body, take a deep breath, and get it to exactly half cup without the movement. Plus what? That's right, three tablespoons. You guys are listening at home. You could pour this right in the liquids here. Now, I know a lot of the East Coasters, West Coasters are like, this is not real pizza. This is a casserole in a round dish with cheese. It's a jabby jack. I guarantee you, you make this, you come to Chicago, you sit down in a proper pizzeria, and you have this, Nobody's gonna have anything bad to say about it because it's delicious pizza. This is like the true OG Chicago style deep dish. <laughs> Smooth. Okay, let's pour this in there, get it going. Now we could pour, remember in here we have the water, the bloomed yeast and the oil. It's all coming together, okay? You just wanna make sure you get yourself that rubber spatula on hand and we're gonna scrape down the bowl. Why are we doing this right when we're getting going is because this is a very, very short knead. It's a quick dough almost, closer to a biscuit than it is to a pizza dough traditionally. So you get those layers, that crag, it sucks up the butter in the end, and it's more of like that, you know, just beautiful, light, crackery, biscuity crust. And that's why we wanna aim for about a minute knead on this, all right? Maybe 90 seconds, nothing more than that. Right when you see it come together, you're done. We're looking for that crispy biscuity crust, not a big, bready, chewy, you know, fluffy crust. One, give it a little more, just kind of get it off the hook. 10, nine, seven, 34, 28, hike. That's all we need, trust me. And you could smell that yeast in there I just like to kind of form it into a nice little quick ball. Here we go. And there you have it. Now, that is a crazy looking pizza dough, right? It's not that perfectly smooth, sheeny dough, right? It's got, it's got character, right? It's got, it's got things about it. It's, 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 it's a rough structure. So all we're gonna do is give it a couple turns here on our board. No extra flour necessary, right? This is not sticky. It's not a super hydrated dough. 
but we are going to form it into a tight ball. We got a, our proofing bowl here, just a little bit of oil to help it from not sticking. We will put this dough in a non-reactive bowl. I always like glass over metal, right? Just doesn't get crusty on the bottom, has a little more you know, barrier between you and the heat. Somewhere warm, but not on your stove where you're doing the preheating, because you'll definitely get that crust on the bottom. It was just not fun to work with, right? We want this whole thing 360 soft. So we're gonna cover it with a wet towel. I prefer a wet towel to help seal it even more. Put it in a warm spot in the kitchen for six hours. Press pause and I'll see you in six. All right, guys, let's take a look at our dough that has been proofing and rising for six hours. Look at that, doubled in sides. We got that nice protective barrier of the oil around it. There's nothing crusty on top. It is ready to be punched down. So what we're gonna do now is preheat our oven right now, 450, and punch down the dough. And when we come back in 15 minutes, we're gonna build a pizza. So one, two, pause. Hey guys, welcome back. That was a tremendous 15 minutes I just spent with myself reflecting on how my day is going so far. And guess what? It's going great because our dough post punching has had a chance to kind of just bubble up just a little bit. Now it's nice and flat and ready to be built into a true Chicago style deep dish pizza. First, we need that butter crust, right? I always say yes to butter crust. Just gives it an extra crispy, buttery crunchiness that you just, you can't live without. So we are going to melt a tablespoon of butter. Always put the butter in the cold pan. I don't like putting butter into a hot pan. You just lose so much of it to the atmosphere and it browns really quickly. And this way, we just melt it gently and it'll happen very quickly. So we have our dough ready to go. I got my mise en place all set here for when it's pizza building time, you don't wanna have to scramble for ingredients. You want everything to be built quick and put in the oven, right? Oven's at 450. Tomatoes are ready, whole tomatoes. I got my sausage here, bulk hot Italian sausage or sweet Italian sausage. And slices from the deli of a whole milk or a part skim, low moisture mozzarella. I like the low moisture stuff because it's less moisture, more of it good cheese pull and chewiness to it. And of course, you can't do this without a proper deep dish pizza pan. Now this was ordered online. You can get them on uh, you know, various sites, order a true Chicago deep dish pizza pan, or you can use your cake pans, okay? Our butter is melting, right? Just like that, it happens so quick. It doesn't really need much more. We just want a light melt so it's easier to spread. And we're gonna create that butter crust, right? So butter goes in first. One tablespoon, move it all around so it gets up the rims and the edges, not too much. If you put too much oil or butter in here, it's just gonna be hard to form the dough and it's gonna be too slick and that dough's gonna pull away. But you can see as we start building, it's gonna kind of start hardening up a little bit. Next comes that dough. Right, I do it the dry side down, right into that pan. Now we can start forming it, right? I'm looking at the size of this pan. It needs a little dough removed that we will turn into garlic knots. So I'm removing about a quarter of the dough, anywhere up to uh, you know half the dough, depending on your size pan here. But this feels right to me just by touching the bottom. Okay, so we're gonna get started, right? And this is kind of the Chicago way here, right? Once you have that perfect even base, right? I could feel it with my hands. I could feel it's even. There's no huge clumps of dough anywhere in there. Now let's start making that rim, right? That, that magical crust we love. Just by going around and pressing it fairly tight with your fingers and your knuckles there to create this kind of 90 degree ledge, right? Just like that. So we are going up, just going around the horn like this making sure, right, it's not sloping, but a, a, a definite 90 degree angle right where that bottom meets the rim here. And it's going all the way up. I want it as high as you can get it, right? Pressing it the whole time. You don't want it to rise and push everything up. You want this fairly flat. So any bubbles you see, any pockets of air, you want to puncture. All right, this is looking good. All right, next comes the cheese the meats, and then we'll get to the sauce last. Starting with the cheese goes on first. What? What are you doing, Jeff? 
We don't do that here in New York City. We don't. We put the cheese on top with very, very thin slices of sausage. That's not what we do in Chicago. We give you the good stuff. So we are literally putting a duvet cover of cheese on the bottom here. That's why we're using the slices and not the minuscule little pre-packaged, pre-grated stuff. Do it right and get that full 360 cheese blanket going because there is no shortage of cheese in a true Chicago deep dish. So look at that. It's a pinwheel with one in the middle. And that's perfect, right? And maybe I'll throw a couple there and then 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 there. This is awesome. So on here, you can see is tw about 12 ounces of part skim low moisture mozzarella. Great. Now comes the toppings. In the Marl family house, right, growing up, and to this day, we are divided. Half the camp is in pepperoni camp. The other half of the camp is in sausage camp. Never the two shall meet, okay? Luckily, pizza is the most democratic food item on the planet because you could feed up to four people or two very large hungry Maros with one of these and everybody gets what they want. I'm a pepperoni guy, but I like one slice of sausage once in a while. My dad, my mom, my brother will never touch pepperoni. They only demand sausage. Okay, so instead of, you know, breaking up the family, going our separate ways with a decades of turmoil and strife and therapy bills, half sausage, half pepperoni. Well, let's do the pepperoni first since it's my favorite. I'm talking the classic pepperoni. This is not a place for those, you know, thick cut pepperoni cups from the stick, right? I love them on top of Detroit's, pan pizzas, grandma style pizzas, but for this, you want them thinner, a little bigger, and we're doing a full layer, half right down the line. This is the pizza DMZ right here, okay? This is gonna be that brackish water that makes the people who like both things happy, but just give you, you know, like a little, a little punch in the gut for those pepperoni people, because they're gonna get a little sausage on their first bite. So it's gonna be like, you know, put everybody in their place. This is just food, it's just pizza, it's not that serious. Okay, we are just putting a good amount of roni on there. Pepperoni, next comes the sausage. Now, on this style of pizza, whether you're going to Melnati's, uh, Uno, Dues, Pequod's, Paisano's, Salerno's, any of these places with vowels on the end of their names that serve pizza, it'd be one whole thin sheet of sausage on there. So there's no sausage nuggets, it's literally a sheet of sausage. So get some good Italian sausage bulk. You can take it out of the casing if you can't find it bulk. This just makes your job a lot easier. So not too thick, right? A nice thin, using our hands again, right? Thin layer of that sausage. Beautiful, we're pressing this down. Okay, do you see what we're doing here, guys? Thin, pressed down layer of sausage. Now I like to keep this clean by wearing gloves. Avoid the hand wash. Obviously, take your gloves off when you're done. Discard them. Now we can get to the sauce. Very excited about this because this is, you know what, I'm gonna grab some more gloves here because I'm a little sensitive once in a while to tomato juice, believe it or not. So I am gonna hand crush a whole can of whole San Marzano tomatoes. There's no pizza sauce on this, right? It's not seasoned with garlic, with dried Italian seasoning, with oregano, salt, nothing. It's just the pure best canned tomato in the world, crushed by hand, put directly on top of that. You do want some chunkiness to it. Just gives it some, some character, if you will. That's why we're using our hand here. Look at this, this is so nice. All right, I'm feeling good about this. Now I like to kind of use my fingers, almost like a, like a strainer or a sieve, so again, you don't want too much of that liquid in there. You just want like that, the, the meat of that tomato, right? And it's going right on, right, with our hands. So you can take a good amount. Now, depending on what kind of canned tomatoes you're using, they could be a little more liquidy. So you want to keep an eye on this, right? Get it to the rim like that. Look at that. Full 360 San Marzano goodness. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. All that dough is hitting on the bottom is pure heat and metal. So you're gonna get that bottom buttery, crackery crust. 
it's it's very well balanced. It's ready to go. One more thing to add to this, just a quick little dusting of parm. I think Pecorino Romano is a little strong for this, so this is when you get the good grated Parmigiano Reggiano on top. In the oven, we are gonna bake this. 25 minutes at 450 until it is golden brown. Aim for the lower rack opposed to the higher rack, but keep an eye on it. You may need to rotate it. Into the oven, it shall go. Press pause and I'll see you in a couple. All right, guys, welcome back. Well, it smells like a legitimate pizzeria in here. My favorite smell on the planet. It's time for this baby to get taken out of that oven. This is it, we did it. All right, it's best to be patient right now and let this rest for five minutes to let everything set up. So press pause and I'll see you in five. All right, the pizza has rested. It's hot, but it's not too hot to handle right now. We took it out of the pan, which makes it easier to cut, especially when you got a lot of hungry people around you. Just get a nice, sharp chef's knife here. And we got, remember, the half sausage, half pepperoni. Where the first cut lands, nobody knows. Let's get in there. Ooh. Oh. All right, let's get our plate ready. I usually wear a pizza bib, but I left it at home. So a napkin will do. Let's see what we got. I'm hoping for pepperoni. Yes, pepperoni. No, no, no sausage remnants on there whatsoever. But you could see the layers already, how thin that bottom layer is, how many, you know, like tight air pockets, the shelf of this crust where it meets the bottom crust, right? And this is all like a, a snack right here. This is like the appetizer. I eat a lot of times slices of deep dish backwards. It's crazy, I know. But now, since we are civilized, we are gonna knife and fork this. I've worked on this. I've become one with this recipe and I taste it in every bite. It's so familiar in those fresh tomatoes, that just salty, spicy pepperoni on there, that beautiful layer of cheese, the right amount of saltiness and chew. Let's try that crust. Oh, sweetness from the corn. The fact that we only needed it for a minimal amount of time because of this light, airy biscuit quality. So this here is an authentic, real deal, deep dish Chicago style pizza, folks. 